right here on the arms room with Glenn and John. Oh, I, get to introduce <laughs> this I this cut week. you off. I saw you inhaling. You suck, bro. <laughs> Don't be mad. All right. Well, now go ahead and do your intro. No, I already did it. You did it for me. Thank you. I'm John, by the way. I like how you waved to people. Hey, there's a camera. Hey. <laughs> nice sound effects. All right. So uh, this weekend, let's talk about what we did. We had a women's practical AR-15 class. It was really awesome. So if you're one of those ladies who was there and you're listening, you did awesome. And you did a lot more than everyone else who just talks about training but never actually does it. Two days, we had ladies uh, with their AR-15s doing everything from just learning about the fundamentals of, of how the system works to actually disassembling the entire thing in our mini armors course with Will Larson from Semper Paratus Arms, who is an amazing armor. Uh, they did marksmanship training. They had defensive application training, all kinds of really awesome and exciting and educational and enjoyable training that these ladies did and that's a whole lot more than a lot of people do when they just talk about doing training these ladies really did it and they got dirty and they got uh, tired and they got bruised and they got all sweaty outside in the rain and the wind or not the, the rain I mean the wind that's what I meant to say I was thinking of rain because I hate wind and I actually prefer rain over wind. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but anyways, these ladies did awesome. So fantastic ladies, if you're listening, thank you very much for coming out and working hard. Well, I'm glad you had such an awesome weekend. I did have an awesome weekend. I sat around my house all weekend. <laughs> it was horrible. Oh man. Oh well, life goes on. It does. So uh, today, yes, we're gonna be talking about kids. I like kids. We have kids. Even Adam has procreated. Good job, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so kids and training kids, but not training kids like we would train like Navy SEALs or anything. Just, just training kids like uh, we want them to be able to handle emergencies. Because let's face it, today in our society, kids are being not being raised or educated to be self-reliant or take care of themselves. They're they're really no. being taught the opposite of that. Yes, yes, they are. So I, you've got, <clears throat> from their public education to jobs to society in general, you know, we all know about the entitlement problems and mm -hmm. the lack of self-reliance in our kids and all that terrible stuff that we all don't like. Well, it's not just in the kids, though, anymore. Like it's, my, my wife has well, a... Well, kids become older is the problem. <laughs> yeah, my wife has a government <laughs> job, and this week um, they had to do their Department of Homeland Security active shooter training, mm -hmm. which is... That freaking joke. Yeah, it is kind of. Most most active shooter trainings are pretty terrible. It's barricade, hide, run, and fight or something run, like that. Run, hide, like, fight. Yeah, run, hide, fight. That's yeah. the one. Run, yeah. hide, fight is a department. Fighting, fighting is your security. last option. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's your Sometimes running know. is a better option. Sometimes yeah, hiding absolutely. is a better option. Sometimes fighting is a better option. At least they're training something. This you got to look true. at it that way. This is true. There's plenty of people who have no idea what to do. They hide under oh desks or, yeah, panic mode. My hair's on fire. Panic I don't know mode. what's going on. So let's talk about kids. I, I, I want to tell you about my youth because I had kind of an interesting youth when it came to to firearms because that's kind of what we're going to start with, firearms. All right. Tell me more. I will tell you more. So my, uh, my dad did a lot of gun trading when I was a kid. And a lot of buying, a lot of selling, saw a lot of different guns, shot a lot of different types of firearms. And my dad <clears throat> grew up in the big game guide hunting business. That was a family business long ago. And so he grew up in that business where firearms were very much just a, a tool, just a way of life. And so he kind of raised me the same way, you know, guns were just a way of life. My dad always carried a gun. We always had guns. We hunted, we recreationally shot most of the places we went, camping or whatever, we had firearms, we, you know, used them to take care of critters around the house or whatever. It was just a very natural thing for us. I had access mostly to firearms my entire life, you know, they weren't really kept totally locked up and away from me and because they were tools and we might need them. And so that's just kind of the way that I was raised and I was raised with a, a different kind of safety, you know, concept. It was, it was a much more common sense approach to safety because we had access to firearms all the time. So when it came to things like responding to an emergency where I may actually need a firearm, it was a lot more of a 
just a very natural thing to us. I, I just I never really thought of firearms as anything other than a tool. I never really thought of them as some kind of dangerous, deadly thing. I mean, obviously we saw them used in crimes or whatever, but we didn't associate the gun with the crime. We associated the criminal with the crime. You know? What? Yeah, I know. Shocking. How dare Shocking. you? How dare you? Right. And so that's just kind of the way I was raised. Uh, you know, as I got older, obviously I saw a lot of other crazy things happen with firearms and and uh, and certainly with kids. You know, suddenly I became an adult and I started having my own kids. And, and I just kind of did with my kids what my dad did with me. I, my kids were, you know, my oldest, my, my, my oldest son was probably, I don't know, he's probably 18 months old the first time I took him out shooting with me, you know, put his little hearing protection on and, and took him out and did some shooting. You know, I used to take him rabbit hunting with me and, and take him out just target shooting. And I taught him about firearms and how they worked. And I just removed the mystery and the mystique oh, yeah, absolutely. of firearms, you know. And if he wanted to see my guns, then he asked me, and I showed him. And we talked about safety, and and we talked about you know how to handle them, and we talked about ammunition and the different types of firearms. And and now it's to the point where, and I did that with all my kids. And so now it's to the point where my kids aren't they don't really care about the guns. They love to shoot. When they ask to shoot, we go shooting, you know, um, but they don't care so much about like my guns. If I, you know, when I'm cleaning my guns, there's like, whatever, they don't care. There's no mystery. There's no mystique. You know, there, there's no, uh, there's no massive curiosity. Now I still keep my firearms secured because that's the intelligent thing to do, regardless of how comfortable you are with your firearms. You should always keep your firearms secured, especially in places like Arizona where there's, you know, potential, law breaking that may be going on if you're not keeping them secured but I just I don't know I, I just raise my kids differently I think and, and when you know my son or, or, or my daughters tell me about their friends you know and the way that guns are handled in their house I, I kind of find it interesting you know um, and, and that's another thing that I have to teach my kids about is how do they handle firearms in other people's homes because not everyone keeps their guns secured you know, some some homes are very, very strict with their guns, and they don't ever want the kids to see the guns or touch the guns or know that they even have guns, and it's like this big taboo thing. And Yeah, and, it's, and it really sucks because guns are fun to shoot, and they're fun to hunt with, and they're fun to use. And kids, it, using firearms teaches kids so much. It teaches them responsibility. It teaches them confidence. It teaches them self-reliance. Uh, it, it's, it's an amazing tool to help your kid grow as long as it's taught safe and responsibly. No, I totally agree with you. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, as we were talking off air before the show started, one of the things I did with my, with my son was, uh, he was, you know, he's got all those nerf guns and stuff. So he's got the, the big sniper, you know, nerf gun or whatnot. And, um, I made him practice with that. He, he wanted to, he kept reminding me before his 10th birthday when it was coming around. So oh, dad, only two more years. And I can go hunting with you. And, you know, this and that. I was like, well, you guys start practicing your shooting, and but there's a lot of things that you need to need to know. So he, you know, I taught him, you know, muzzle awareness and with the Nerf gun. So he would walk around and practice holding the weapon um, in different places. And, and, you know, if you had somebody on the left or somebody on the right or somebody on each side of you and, and whatnot. So by the time he got to his hunter safety course, it was... You know, he was like, "Oh, you know, give me something hard, right. hard to do, because this this was easy." But that before I even let him, before I took him, he'd go to the range and watch. I wouldn't let him shoot. Um, I let him shoot a couple of times, but uh, it was he had to prove to me that he could pass the safety side of it first. Mm -hmm. And he was so jacked about, you know, I'm gonna go shooting. I'm gonna go shooting. He would literally come home from school, drop everything, go grab his nerf gun, and would practice. Is say, Dad, am I doing this right? You know, and and that's how that's how it all started. And I and I'd be willing to bet, Adam, that your son is probably safer than ninety percent of the people on a gun range. I, I, I would. <laughs> I would. He better be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's I think that's really the big part is we we can't we can't put kids in a box and say this is when kids should learn about guns. This is when they should learn about shooting. This is when they should learn about safety. That's a big question we get. John and I hear it all oh, the yeah. time in classes about when should I teach my kids how to shoot? There's, you know, I have different, all my kids are different. You know, one of them loves to shoot. It's, he lives for it. My oldest daughter, she enjoys it. When we go out shooting, she likes it, but it's not really a big thing to her. My next daughter, she just you know, she loves shooting as well. You know, she's not as jacked about it as her brother is. So 
every kid's a little bit different. When you expose them to shooting or safety is going to be a little bit different. When you expose them to hunting, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, every kid kind of you have to kind of kind of figure out what what style your kid's going to enjoy and and how much they're really going to want to do this. Because you also don't want to be that crazy sports dad who, you know, Mm. forces your kids to play the sport that you play, you know what I mean? And then they hate it. So you don't want to do that with, you know, with shooting or or hunting either. If your kids don't like it, then they don't like it. Give them time. They'll probably come around. Right. So I think that, uh, you know, when, when you're teaching your kids, you can only take them so far as well. You know, you mentioned Hunter's Ed. You got to get your kids into a program. Yeah, and they, and they have a, they have a good program here in the state of Arizona. He did his uh, was it last summer or the summer before online with with his grandfather with my dad. They did the online class and then they went and did the field day. Mm-hmm. And the field day was four hours, I think it was something mm-hmm. like that. And it was it was a uh, it was really cool how how they did it. Um, but I, I want to kind of go back a second. And you're talking about, you know, when to teach your kids. You know, when I when I first had it, we got my first handgun. I put it on the table, mm. and I said, "All right, come here. I want you to take a look at this." And he was like, "Oh," and I was like, "You know what that is?" Like, yeah. And I was like, "Are you supposed to touch that?" He's like, "No." And I was like, "You know what happens if you do?" He's like, "I get grounded." And I was like, "Glad we had this conversation." <laughs> you know, that was it was plain, but you know, short, sweet, and to the point. So, um, but yeah. One of the things I did with my son uh, when when we first started shooting was we went out and I kind of showed him the the destructive power of firearms. You know, when he started, I started taking him, as I mentioned earlier, really young. But as he got older, obviously I wasn't letting him shoot when he was really young. But as he got older, then I started letting him shoot. I mean, he was only a few years old really when he started pulling triggers with my assistance. And that's kind of been how all my kids have been. But one of the first things I do with all of them, <clears throat> and especially with, with my son because he showed the most interest in it, is I, I took him out and I showed him the real destructive capability. So, you know, I took him out, um, let him shoot the little twenty two through a piece of paper that was about, you know, 10 feet away. Saw him, you know, we talked about the hole it makes and all that. Then took a, a handgun, moved that piece of paper a little bit closer. With my help, we pulled the trigger boom, you know, big blast comes out, muzzle blast tears the, you know, tears the paper more than the bullet does. And then he realizes, oh my gosh, this is really powerful. Of course, he lets go, which is why I have to help him. You know, he lets go. Oh my gosh, I didn't like that. And then we talk about that. You know, this is, this is what guns really do. This is the kind of capability that they have. You know, we show them destructive power. We shoot fruits and ice, took them out rabbit hunting, shoot a rabbit, take them over, show them the dead rabbit. We talk about it's not sleeping, it's dead. And this is what dead means. And this is what, this is what, you know, firearms can potentially cause not in any kind of negative light but in 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 a realistic as you know to a kid's level realistic and help them understand just what the potential has because if we take our guns and we just hide them and we're like this is dad's gun you're never supposed to touch it you're never supposed to look at it what are they going to do they're going to find a way to touch it and look at it right let me let me ask you guys a question this this brings up a question because uh you know one one of the listeners out there um you mentioned they used to they used to teach kids how to shoot in high school and at his uh, high school and I'm not gonna say his age because he's old but um, they used to have a, an old indoor range yeah. at the at the school now now where I grew up you know it was we didn't necessarily we had hunter safety and stuff like that mm-hmm. at at the school it was just one of the things I, I grew up in the Midwest so it was it was one of the things that you just you did um, is that something that you guys see uh, you guys being in the firearm industry do you do you see anybody doing that nowadays a little really a i grew little. up in the south and we didn't have that but we did get the first day of deer season off of school that's what i'm talking about yeah like, I remember, the school was like i remember boom, that but as far done. as far as like like gun safety and firearm safety and stuff like that i mean do you see any schools teaching about that nowadays well interestingly enough we actually teach a school program um, there are two programs. There's at, at an actual school. At an actual school. Like a high, <clears throat> like a high school. A high school. Really? Yep. In Prescott. Okay. In Prescott Valley. Okay. Um, there's there's a couple of things that we've discovered. The state of Arizona actually has, and a lot of people don't know this. The state of Arizona actually has, in conjunction with the Game and Fish, a I can't remember if it's a one semester or two semester long program that's all about firearms. It's a history and all kinds of breaks it down. There is one school in the entire state that teaches it. It's North Point up in uh, Prescott. It's kind of a, a charter school, real high standard charter school. 
and I don't, I'm not even sure how often they teach it, primarily because it's such a long program. I think that's really what drives people away, and it's specific to firearms, which makes a lot of people nervous as well. Right. Right. So what we found is, you know, several years ago, it's been about four years ago, I uh, started going around and talking to different schools, charter schools mostly. Dude, when we go into public schools, and, and I've done I've done so many meetings with staff in services, board meetings, charter school board meetings, public school board meetings, trying to talk to them about not even firearms related stuff, just doing some emergency response training for the staff and for the kids so that if something does happen, be it a fire or someone having a heart attack or God forbid, you know, an active shooter or something, that the kids could actually be be, you know, assets and not liabilities and they're all just like, no way, you know what I mean? If, if it's not a new, you know, sun cover for the frickin' parking lot, we're not interested in spending money on it. Right. So... And do you see, do you, do you see that that being more of, a, of an issue that it, it comes down to the financial it, it does part a, of it? It does or is it, to is it an because extent. It, because of the firearm industry has such a, I, I don't want to say a cloud over it, it does but, though. You know. It does have it does have kind of a, a negative connotation. And and absolutely, yes, it is slightly financial. That being said, the program that we teach through this really great organization called Pace Academy, uh, they're a charter school out of Prescott Valley, and they also have a campus at Camp Verde. They're a uh, a computer based learning charter school. Pretty cool facility. Pretty cool staff. And what we found through them was we designed a program for them that wasn't just based on guns. So we priced it so that a public school could afford it. It's a lot less expensive for the school than we would normally obviously charge for a, you know, a normal training class. Right. But what this class is, it's two hours a week for four weeks followed by a field day. So what we do there is, it's a, so four weeks, right? Right. First week, we talk about uh, constitution. We talk about rights. We talk about freedom and liberty and what those things really are and what they really mean and what your rights really are. And one of the biggest things we find, of course, is like, for example, I'll start off, and, and this has a lot to do with what we're talking about today, is I'll ask the kids, um, all right, there are, you know, who can who can tell me what the first 10 amendments are? You know, and they're like, you know, maybe a couple of them get the answer, like, oh, Bill of Rights. And it's not because these kids are stupid, it's because they've never been taught this information. All this stuff, the shooting, the home, you know, the home economics classes, the personal finance classes, the right. government classes, all these things are being removed from school for a very particular reason. We'll talk about that maybe in another show. But, but, uh, but nah. as they're, <laughs> but as they're taking these things out, um, you know, these kids don't even understand their rights. So then I'll ask them, okay, so how many of you can name, you know, two or three or four amendments or whatever? And they're like, oh, you know, maybe they can name a few of them. I go, look, if you don't even know your rights, then how can you possibly protect them? How can you possibly exercise them? You don't even know what they are. So that's kind of what we spend the first week on. The second week we spend on firearm safety. We bring real firearms, no live ammunition, real firearms into this classroom. We're allowed to do that because we have special permission from the administrators. So we bring real firearms in with dummy rounds, and we show the kids how to handle guns, kind of like what you were talking about with your son and Nerf guns, how to handle guns in a room with people, how to unload firearms, how to check and make sure they're unloaded, all that kind of stuff. Then the third week, we talk about emergency response and uh, dealing with trauma first aid emergencies. And then the fourth week, we, we kind of finish up the trauma first aid, and we just talk about general emergencies, and then we kind of do a like an oral exam uh, that all the kids kind of have to get involved in in order to quote-unquote pass the class. Then we do a field day. We just take all the kids out, and, and these are all high school age kids. We take all the kids out to a range, and we let them shoot any guns that they want to. Obviously, we've got a couple instructors out there. It's highly supervised and all that. We're just shooting at you know steel plate targets. We're not training them or anything like that, but they're getting the experience on how to properly load, handle, and shoot firearms. So should they encounter something, should they want to get into the shooting sports, hunting sports, join the military, whatever, they'll at least have some basis of knowledge, safe and responsible use of firearms to draw from. That is the only school out of over a dozen that we have approached with the program that selected it. Wow. The rest of them want nothing to do with it. So uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about some other emergency training for kids how to train your kids for medical emergencies and other things like that. You are listening to The Arms Room. Have you ever wanted to be a truck driver? If so, pay attention. If not, pay attention anyway. Southwest Truck Driver Training offers everything you need to get started. 
You can get hired before you begin training. They've got GI Bill approved training facilities, day, night, or weekend programs to fit your busy schedule. If you have any questions, no sweat. They've got veteran supportive campuses with veterans on staff to serve you. And on top of that, they have lifetime job placement assistance. Put the pedal to the metal. Call Southwest Truck Driver Training today. Everyone's going to need an attorney at some point in your life. I'm no different. Hey everyone, it's James from Vets On. Whether it was my last will and testament before deployment or my ongoing custody battle for my children during my divorce, I needed help, so I lawyered up. If you need help, I urge you to contact Capstrom Law Firm. Capstrom Law Firm in Springfield, Missouri services clients throughout the state in criminal law, personal injury, and family law. With over 13 years practicing law, Tom Capstrom understands both law and court procedures and how stressful they can be. Let Tom Capstrom Law Firm and his dedicated staff take the stress and worry out of a difficult situation by calling him today. We feel so strongly about the work that Tom and his staff are doing that he'll be a monthly guest on the show. Tom is a veteran and a listener, for God's sake, so you know the guy is solid and will fight for you. Give Tom a call today by calling 417-864-0552 or email Tom at capstromlaw.com. And don't forget to tell him that Vets On sent you. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertising. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you or someone you know suffering from eczema, diabetes, or vitamin deficiencies? Then I can share with you something to help remedy that with health and wellness. It can be a business plan too, which is a great opportunity to meet and interact with all types of people who care about changing lives. So when you are ready to make a difference, call Jamie at 602-295-9969. That's 602-295-9969. Hey everybody, it's James with Vets On. Are you and your spouse looking for employment? Well, then look no further than iVetX. iVetX is placing veterans with the right hiring companies. Join their mission of putting veterans in inspiring careers with ensured success. Access their national pipeline of military talent for companies. All veterans are pre-screened for 55 soft skill sets, 800 certification types, education, experience, salary range, location, and much more. IVEDEX helps you find the perfect job to veteran match. Your skills are based on what's needed for success in that job. If you're a hiring company or a veteran looking for your next career, get started today by visiting their site by going to www.ivedex.com or by calling 442-333-4838. IVEDEX, bridging the employer-veteran gap by putting America's veteran to work today. You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. All right, we're back on The Arms Room. We want to hear your input on what we're talking about. So if you're listening and you have experience with training kids or questions, questions about training your kids, about training your kids, call us. Call in number 602-399 seven seven eight seven or you can go onto our Facebook page and leave a comment on the post and we will uh, answer your question or address your comment but if you think we're crazy for for letting our kids shoot or or training them how to handle emergencies let's hear that too because we love arguing I don't think people that think we're crazy listen to our show yet yeah yet we need yet. to get there well, yeah. Adam let's get on that all right so, <laughs> so get us some people who hate us. Damn it, Adam. Find someone. Find someone to argue with us. Hey, we could call I our hate buddy. You both. Oh, I can't, no. Well, that no, works. I'm just, I'm just kidding. That starts trying to. Th- <laughs> hey, we could call our buddy from uh, was it Safford? The BLM at Safford. Yeah, yeah, we could call that guy up. He did hate us. He, That's oof, the only loathing. student. Out of loathing. thousands of students that we've had over the last five years or whatever, man, that is the only student we've ever had who hated us. That was pretty awesome. Was <laughs> he good time. hated us. It was a good time. Oh, that was good stuff, man. All right. So back to kids and emergencies. Kids um, and emergencies. There's some other type. You know, so well, we, we talked about shooting. What were you going to say, John? I was going to say, I know that <clears throat> you living the lifestyle you live, you, you've taught your children, and you and I have discussed this quite a bit. And mm-hmm. the emergency thing is not necessarily, you know, a trauma incident, but right. like, uh, mm-hmm. okay, there's a wildfire yeah. coming. We have to leave our house. <clears throat> 
you have to get X, Y, and Z ready. Mm -hmm. You need your oldest boy to go out and turn the gas off of the house. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that your boy knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of that's that's the kind of stuff we're talking about teaching our kids how to do too, because those are also emergencies that. Our children need to know how to handle. Absolutely, because when we're talking about shooting, we're not we're not trying to teach our kids how to be snipers or, or door kickers or anything like that. If they turn into that, so be it. But that's not necessarily yeah. what we're trying to teach them how to do. What we're teaching them, like we mentioned, with shooting is confidence and self reliance and and a, a worth of self, a value that they have, responsibility. I mean, how responsible is my son? When I can hand him an AR-15 and say, okay, we're going to go hiking, we're going to go hunting, whatever. He can carry his little 22, whatever he's got, loaded, and we're walking, and I never see a muzzle, and, and, and I never feel unsafe. And how much confidence does that give him when he says, hey, Dad, let me do this? And then how much more responsibility in his life does he feel when he says, hey, I've been trusted with this, and this is kind of serious stuff. This is big kid stuff, and I'm being trusted with it how much better they feel about themselves. I want my kids, I don't know about you, my, I want my kids to be ass kickers, and, and you got to give them responsibility, and you got to give them confidence that that's going to happen. No, Listen up, parents. Your kids are never going to be ass kickers, all right? If you let them sit around the freaking couch playing video games, eating potato chips, never seeing the outside, never giving them any responsibility, never giving them any confidence, never taking them anywhere, never showing them anything, relying on public school to teach them everything, kids are going to grow and be leeches. So I'm assuming you're passionate about this. Rant over. All right. <laughs> so, wow. So, boom. That just happened. Woo. All right. Fan the flame. Come on. Someone call in and disagree with me, you sissies. All right. <clears throat> so <laughs> I totally disagree with you. I try to call people out on the, on the internet radio. Let's fight over the radio. All right. So, so let's have a Facebook argument. <laughs> so, so other emergencies. How about when your kids are getting babysat, right? Like most of my babysitters are high school girls, you know, young girls, teenage girls, whatever. Th those are the people who mostly are babysitting mine and wife's kids. So when we're out and having an emergency, right, because something happens at our home and we're not there, do even uh, – we're talking about not just kids, your kids. We're talking about kids in general. What does your babysitter know? You know, you're leaving your kids entrusted to the care of somebody. Do they even know CPR? Would it be – I mean, how much is a CPR class? 50 bucks? I mean, that's yeah. like what we charge for. Is it worth paying 50 bucks for your babysitter to go through a CPR class? Do you guys have an age, um, age limit of when, you know, you have to be X amount of age to, to take a CPR class? No, there is no age limit for taking a, taking a class. Generally speaking, the way that we do when we're training kids – uh, youth. I hate to use the word kids. It, like somehow, it, like you know, denigrates them or something. I don't like that. Um, so, so youth. All right. Um, like sixteen is the lowest that we'll go without parental. Um, what am I looking for here? Guidance. Guidance. Not guidance. The, but the parent has to be there. Yeah. They parental have to train presence. them. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, below sixteen, we'll go as low as twelve. With a parent, we'll go lower than 12 in, in some of our classes. And then most of the time, obviously, in like firearms class and things like that, 16 is really as young as kids want to be anyway in those types of classes. But in a lot of our emergency response classes, our survival classes, our, our medical classes, we'll go down to 12 if the parents are there. In case the kid starts to get bored or you know starts to lose interest or starts to lose their mind or whatever, we need the parent there to be able to handle that. Below 12, we'll never allow them into an open class. That's private class territory. You know, and we do a lot of trainings with families. Just how long are the classes? Out. It all depends on the class. You know, I mean, it could be a couple hours. Our survival classes are, you know, a couple hours each. Our medical classes could be anywhere from four hours to two days, depending on you know the the content that we're covering. So, but that's where we do a lot of training with families on a private basis because we can come into their home where everybody's comfortable, or go to you know one of our classrooms if they want to get outside their home and train their family all on the same information. That way, if an emergency does happen, everyone's responding in the same way, be it with firearms, emergency response stuff, survival, whatever. So when you're, when you're looking at your kids, you, know, you want them in an emergency to be an asset and not a liability. I, I don't want to, like, an emergency happens, I'm going, oh, my kids, what am I going to do? Like, i got to run around and gather up all this stuff, or i got to handle this emergency, or I'm trying to plug this wound or whatever, and oh, my kids. 
you know, what am I supposed to be doing with them? And dad, Dad, what are you doing? What are you exactly. Doing? Dad, Dad, Dad. <laughs> I'm Alex crying them so off my dad, leg, you know. Dad. Instead, I want to be able to say, you, go turn the gas off. You, go, go get, grab the fire extinguisher. Go get the fire extinguisher. You, go get my medical kit, whatever. You know, they, you need to teach your kids. And you don't have to be crazy about it. Again, this isn't some kind of, you know, nutty special forces training you're giving your kids. you got to take it to their level. But a simple thing like a fire drill. I mean, when was the last time that with your kids, you went through a fire drill on your house? I can honestly, I will admit that I have never done it because my child is too young. Like he's too young to get out of the house when it's on fire. He's not quite smart enough to grasp the that that concept yet because he's still he's still a toddler. So in but my you, mind, then you still got to teach him at least things of what to do if the house is on fire. Yeah. Getting low with smoke, stop, drop, and roll if they're on fire. You got to you know show him things like danger. You know, firemen look scary as hell, man. You know, when it's dark and it's yes. smoky and shit's on fire and they're all geared up, oxygen masks and all that. Yeah, straight up Darth Vader-ish, you know? And Come with me. Exactly, and your kids are like, no, nah! right? You got to teach them that like that kind of stuff's okay. And again, so you have to teach to their to their age level. But I'll tell you something we found out that was really important to us. You know, we did a fire drill in our house with our kids, and everything we do is, you know, it's pretty mild. Like, we don't get all serious, mm -hmm. but you know, we get a serious enough, but we make it enjoyable you know, kind of make it a family event out of, so to speak. One thing we discovered was my my oldest daughter at the time couldn't reach the front door lock. How stupid! How, in fact, let me take that back. How irresponsible would I be? What an what an ass I would feel like. How terrible would I feel as a dad if my daughter burned to death in our house when it was on fire because I didn't take the time to see if she could unlock the front door. She couldn't reach it. And under stress, she's not going to think something like, get, I'll the, grab a stool. get the stool that's right in the kitchen right next to it. So when we did that fire drill, part of the drill was she's got to get the stool. you got to teach your kids what to do. What, what happens if the house is on fire and your mom and dad are still inside? Brother and sister are still inside. Cat and dog are still inside. How are they supposed to handle that? What are they supposed to do? Where are they supposed to meet? Where's that safe place that they can meet outside the home that once they get to, they should never leave? Because the last thing, you, of course, you want is your kid going there thinking, oh, my gosh, doggy's still inside, runs back inside. Then you get to the safe place. And you're like, oh, my gosh, where's my son? Where's my daughter? Where's my wife? Whatever. And nobody knows where anybody else is. I mean, these are simple, simple things. How many people don't do that simple of an emergency training in their home? Your kid... Don't expect that your kid is going gonna, is gonna to have this information or know this kind of, of, of procedure if you don't walk them through it. A lot of adults don't know this kind of stuff. Don't expect your kid to know it either. And sure as hell, don't depend on, on a public schooling system or something like that to teach your kids this information. Right. While that's helpful, and a lot of times I see like you know, uh, my daughter's school, you know, they'll bring in um, a fireman – Joe or whatever the hell his name is, and they'll bring him in, you know, and they'll teach him about stop, drop, and roll, and they'll teach him about, you know, how scary firemen can look and, and where to hide, you know, where's the safest place, you know, in your room to hide or whatever, you know, where the firemen most likely can look for it. He teaches them stuff like that, and that's important, but you never rely on anyone else to teach your kids the life skills that they're going to need to survive, whether that's balancing a checkbook or surviving a house fire or defending their lives. I can't tell you how excited I am it's terrible as this may sound, when I read online that some kid was at home, some 12-year-old boy, was one I read recently, was at home with his two young sisters. Someone's trying to break into the house, knocking on the door, and he knows better, don't open the door, right? Mom and dad aren't home. Door doesn't get home for anybody. They need something, they can leave it on the doorstep. Well, of course, the guy's just ploying the front door. No one's answering, so him and his partner go around the back door, right? They think no one's home. No one's answering the door. So they start kicking in the back door. Kid goes and grabs his 22 rifle. Now, obviously, we all know the 22 rifle is not necessarily the preferred tool for defending your home, but those two dudes kick in that door, and there stands that kid with this 22 rifle. What's up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the one guy's got a handgun. He goes to point it at the kid. The kid sidesteps, simple movement technique, right? Sidesteps, fires around, right? Doesn't hit the guy. She hits the door frame. What do you think those two dudes did? They puckered ah, they the hell out of there. You know what I mean? <laughs> that guy's shooting a cannon at us, man. We got to go. Would I want my kid to ever have to defend my home? Of course not. I don't want him to have to do that kind of stuff, but... How awesome is it that that kid 
not only obviously had great parents or grandparents or whoever that taught him how to stand up for himself, how to be confident, how to be responsible with that firearm, but they taught him about the mindset. And what might happen, and the realities of the world. You don't have to scare your kids with all the, you know, rapists and, and child molesters and murderers in the world. You don't have to tell them all these terrible stories, but they do need to understand that there's definitely a difference between good people and bad people, and what the bad people really are going to do and what they're capable of. And then that kid was able to defend his home, defend his sisters. How awesome is that? How old was he? Twelve. And I read those stories a lot. On our blog, there's probably, on, on the Independence Training blog, not the Arms Room blog, on the Independence Training blog, there's probably half a dozen stories about that kind of stuff, you know, about kids who are able to save their siblings. There's a, a story I read a few months ago about a girl who, um, her, her younger sister, they're playing in the front yard, you know, creeper stops by, tries to basically scoop up the younger sister. Older sister runs over, latches onto the dude's arm, biting, stomping, kicking, screaming. What do you think the guy does? Let's get he lets go and tries to get the hell out of there because the last thing he wants to do is draw all this attention. He was trying to scoop up some three-year-old girl. I think the, the sister was like seven or eight or something. And she's over there just terrorizing this, this guy, you know, okay. and was able to save her little sister because somebody... Some responsible adult taught her that there are good people and there are bad people, and sometimes the bad people may try to do this, and under no circumstances are you to ever let this to happen to you or your siblings. You protect your siblings at all costs. And, no, and, and she did it. She did exactly the right thing. How awesome is that? It was pretty cool. You know? What were you going to say, John? There's a YouTube video, this little girl in like a toy aisle. Yeah, I love this video. <laughs> and some dude, some dude just like walks up and grabs her and she detonates. She does. Like she goes ballistic. And she's high style, order, man. man. Holy crap. And that dude's like and he just freezes for a second when he lets go of her and then he just like turns and like runs. And they catch him. Yeah. Because they catch of that him trying to get out of the store. Yeah. So we're, and we're not, again, you know, we, we kind of tended to regress back to that, you know, you got to teach, teach your kid to defend themselves. But you also have to teach your kid about other types of emergencies. We mentioned yes. things like fire. You know, I live in Prescott Valley where, like, the, the wind always blows. Twice and, a year. <laughs> twice a year. That's it. Only, only twice Once a year. for six months and another time for six months. Got That's it. it. You know, the grass is dry. I mean, we just saw with the Dosey fire how fast a fire can spread and threaten communities. And, and obviously, of course, we saw you know, the, the Yarnell and then the tragedy that that caused. So we know that in those kind of areas, wildfire is a real threat. What if I have to grab, you know, I've got my kits, but I've never, I've never showed my kids my kits. They've never gone through our, our emergency kits. They have no idea what's in them. They don't, they don't know what to do. I'm trying to grab everybody's kit. Does like, your kid have a kit? My kids have their own kits, and they have their own kits. Obviously, they're not as heavy as mine and my wife's, but they have some things in them. And, and I'll admit that it's actually time for me to go back through my kits. It's been too long yeah. since I've gone back through my, through my kits. I know that it still has useful stuff, but my kids need to see those kits. And probably my oldest daughter is ready to have her own kit now because we need our kids to carry their own stuff. Do they know where that stuff is? Do they know the extra stuff that you may need to grab in order to, you know, hey, I'm going to grab the kits. Kids, you grab as much water as you can throw in the truck. You grab as much food as you can throw in the truck. Remember that stuff we talked about grabbing? I need you to grab that. Remember that thing out of the file cabinet you need to grab? I need you to go grab that. You need, regardless of age, a three-year-old kid can still run to the pantry and grab a couple cans of raviolis or whatever. They right. can still do something useful instead of getting in your way, you're tripping over them, you go lock them in the car, whatever. You know, Teach your kids how to be good, responsible kids. You don't have to scare them with the realities of the world. But to a point, you got to tell them what the possibilities of the world are and then teach them to be responsible. Teach them how to take care of themselves so we don't continue to foster a society of people who can't take care of themselves. It's important. So we're going to go on break. We come back, we're going to keep take, talking about this, uh, this topic, which I am passionate about. Very. I love youth. I've been working with youth for a long time. And uh, we'll talk more about that when we come back from the break. You're listening to The Arms Room. Today by calling 417 
or email Tom at Tom at CapstromLaw.com. And don't forget to tell him that Vets Off sent you. The choice of the lawyer is important. Decision should not be based solely upon advertising. Would your goal be to get you and your family out of debt? I can show you how thousands of people and families are doing just that. This is a business plan made simple. We offer everything from weight loss products to green cleaning solutions. Whether you're interested in making it a full-time or part-time opportunity to become debt-free, or if you are just sick and tired of being sick and tired, call Jamie at 602-295-9969. That's 602-295-9969. Have you ever wanted to be a truck driver? If so, pay attention. If not, pay attention anyway. Southwest Truck Driver Training offers everything you need to get started. You can get hired before you begin training. They've got GI Bill approved training facilities, day, night, or weekend programs to fit your busy schedule. And if you have any questions, no sweat. They've got veteran supportive campuses with veterans on staff to serve you. And on top of that, they have lifetime job placement assistance. Put the pedal to the metal. Call Southwest Truck Driver Training today. You're listening to The Arms Room on the Vets on Media Network. All right, you're back on The Arms Room. We are talking about youth. Youth. And how... Chitlins. Chitlins. How to get them ready for life, life's emergencies. How to handle those kinds of things. One of the things we started talking about before the break that we kind of you know got off topic on and I want to get back on, and that is getting your kids in professional programs. You as a parent can only teach your kids so much for two reasons. One, A, you are only so smart. Regardless of how smart you think you are, you still only know so, so much, much, right? B, your kids only listen to you so much, right? Until you're just like the same dad saying the same thing or the same mom yep. saying the same thing over and over and over again. Get your kids into professional training. You know, one, one of the best times I had recently with my own kids was putting my son, like Adam had mentioned, putting my son through a hunter's ed course. And I went and took the hunter's ed course with him. We did, instead of doing the online thing, we did a live session. And uh, and it was great. I just kind of sat back and let my, I, for me, you know, it was a fresher. It had been, whatever, 15, 20 years or something since I'd taken my, 20 years. I feel old all of a sudden. <laughs> it had been 20, it'd been 20 years since I had taken my hunter's ed course. Ouch. <laughs> all right. And so old. Uh, yeah, I am old. All right. So it'd been 20 years since I take my hunter's ed course. So I was just kind of there, you know, as a refresher. And because as an instructor, I love training. Like I love every class I can get into. I'm like, ooh, give me, I, I know I'm going to learn something. And I did. I learned some cool stuff and, uh, you know, about hunting and things like that. that even as a hunter my whole life, I didn't know. So I sat back and kind of let my kid do his own thing, let him hang out with the other kids, you know, let him ask his own questions, let him deal with the instructor, all that. Went on the field day, stood back, let him do his thing. And it was a lot of fun to watch my son learn this, the things I had been trying to teach him for a while, learn them in a different way from a different person who was a good, he was a good instructor, and, uh, and learn them in a different way. And really help to absorb that information because he was getting from somebody else. When my son's old enough, he's going to be going through medical classes with somebody else. He's going to be going through shooting classes with somebody else. Yes, he's still going to work with me. My daughters, when they get older, they're going to learn self-defense from me. They're already learning a little bit. But I'm going to put them through someone else's program. They've got to learn from someone else's perspective. They've got to learn from someone that they're going to pay a little bit more attention to than dad, who they're used to saying, Okay, yes, Dad. You, you got to do this and you got to do that. They're yes, you're saying, yeah, okay, Dad. Yeah, okay, Dad. You know, we get it. We understand, right? Get your kids in, in professional programs. It is worth every penny you will ever spend. Your kids are your responsibility. And so if you got to spend a little bit of money on that responsibility, welcome to adult life. You know, welcome to parental life. Yeah. You know, your kid's education is important. Spend a little bit of money on it and, uh, and, and put them through a program of some kind. You know, con contact us. Certainly, we'd, we'd love to talk to you about it. And if we can't do it, there's other people who do the programs. We'd love to to share that information with you. So put your kids in professional programs. And on that side, when we talk about medical training, it's important for your kids to know some trauma and first aid stuff. What if I'm out hunting with my son? 
right, or my daughters. And I, I am very confident of handling those kind of emergencies. What if I'm the one who's hurt? What if as we're hunting, right, we got a turkey hunt coming up here later this month or uh, next month in April, just a few weeks away, my son's got a turkey hunt, all right? So we're out there, and every year during turkey season, some yahoo shoots another turkey hunter who's calling like a turkey because he doesn't identify his target. What if I'm that guy who gets shot? I'm, I'm, I'm calling, you know, for turkeys. Some guy doesn't look. Boom, shoots me. I'm lights out. I'm bleeding profusely. I got holes in my chest, and my son has no idea how to handle that and just runs around like a chicken with his head cut off. How is that going to help anybody, and what kind of effect is that going to have on him throughout the rest of his life? Dad got shot. I couldn't do anything. Dad died. What if instead, like I know my son you know, can mostly do right now, he grabs my trauma kit, busts it open, seals up some wounds, stops bleeding, does all that kind of stuff, saves my life. A, how much of a bond do we have after that? B, how good does he feel about himself? How much confidence does that give him? Even if he tries his best to save me and I and I still die anyway because I'm just too catastrophic of a wound, isn't that better for him to handle? Hey, I did everything I could do. Yeah, dad still died, but I didn't stand around while it happened. I did everything I could do, and it was just too much for me to handle. I would rather him have to live with that than have to live with I didn't know what to do, so we just sat out there and, and that happened, you know? So teach your kids about that kind of emergency. And age-wise, I wouldn't say, honestly, that there is any age that is too young to start teaching your kids about emergencies, whether it's self-defense, escaping from a wildfire, dealing with the creepers, stranger danger kind of stuff, uh, dealing with trauma emergencies, turning the gas off to the house, uh, you know, anything like that. I wouldn't say that there's any age. As long as, as soon as they get to a point where they can speak comprehend, understand. Obviously, you're not going to start teaching your newborn this kind of stuff, right? But but as soon as your kid gets old enough to be able to comprehend what you're talking about, it's time to start introducing them to how to be an asset in an emergency. Realistically, I'm not going to set my two-year-old, three-year-old down and be like, all right, let me tell you about gunshot wounds. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, all right, here's what you're going to do now. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go crazy about it. But I am going to be like, hey, if you're at home, you know, with mommy and mommy, you know, passes out and, and you can't wake mommy up, here's the things that you need to do. You know, here's the phone. Here's how it works. Do you have a phone even? I mean, here's just a side note. Do you have a phone that your kid that is your kid's phone? You know, if you don't have a home phone, like I don't have a home phone anymore. I haven't had a home phone for years. So if I don't have a home phone, I've got an extra cell phone. It's an extra 10 bucks a month on my cell phone plan, and it sits in a on the counter, in the kitchen, never moves. That's the phone that the kids use for emergencies. They can't text on it. They can't do date on it. Nothing like that. You know, there's there's uh, no I've always voice, wondered why no you've voicemail, had that whatever. That's what it's for. It's for my kids, you know, so that they can call us, so that we can call them. You know, if the babysitter's there and something happens, they, they have an opportunity to actually make a call, and they don't have to rely on anybody else. That's the key. So do your kids, regardless of their age, know how to unlock your phone? You know, my phone, I got to draw the little pattern and then, you know, maybe it's on the my email or something. Do your kids know how to use your smartphone? Do they know how to press the home key? Do they know how to find your dialer? Be smart about it even and I put a little 911 icon on my home page on my smartphone so that's all they have to do. That's that's a shortcut to the contact of 911. It's got a big red cross on it. They just go right to that contact press the uh, you know the green phone button and boom they're online with 911 so have you even gone as far as to teach your kids that simple of stuff just how to how to even get help so yeah i'm going to take my 2 or 3 year old and say hey you're at home with mommy and this happens you know you are you know in the toy aisle with your brother and sister they step around the corner and someone you don't know or maybe you do know comes up to you and wants you to go with them what do you do then you know, teaching your kids these kind of things, are they totally going to comprehend everything you say? Of course not. But as time goes on, the more you tell them, the more you have repetition, the more you have consistency in that kind of training, the more they're going to understand it until when they become older, they're not going to be scared. They're not going to be paranoid because you don't have to build that into them because they're confident in themselves. You know, when people talk about, oh, I want to make my kids paranoid, you're making them paranoid by not teaching them how to handle themselves. That's why your kid's scared of the dark. My kids aren't scared of the dark. You know why? Because they kick the crap out of anything in the dark. That's why. <laughs> you know what I mean? Teach your kid how to not be scared of the dark by giving them some confidence. 
That's why kids are scared of the dark because they're scared of the unknown. They're scared it's of that, a, that's that thing. It's actually a deep-seated psychological fear left over from millennia ago when the darkness was truly bad because big animals came and ate you. That's like why caveman stuff. Yes. Is that why you're scared of the dark? Yeah, that's why. That's why people in general are still scared of the dark. Interesting. It's a survival instinct. I'm not scared of the dark. dark. Dude, I sleep in the dark by myself all the time. Don't lie. I go in the dark on purpose. Let's bring it on, dark. Did I ever tell you about my scared of the dark story? How I got over my fearness of the dark? Oh lord. It's all no. about. It's all about confidence, man. I used to, as a kid, I used to go hang out in the dark in the backyard. We had all these fences, so we had these like different yards and all these sheds, and I would turn off all the lights outside when I had to go take the garbage out. So I had to walk through these like these two fenced yards. Like one was like our backyard, then like the animal yard, you know, because I grew up out in the middle of nowhere with animals and stuff. And uh, and I used to turn off all the lights and then force myself to walk slowly to the garbage can, put the garbage in the garbage can, turn around, don't look back. And walk slowly back to the house. That's actually no joke how I overcame my fear in the dark. Because after doing that for a few weeks, guess what? Nothing ate me. And I realized after a while, like my dad taught me as a kid. <laughs> this, is, this is what my dad taught me as a kid. This, <laughs> he taught me that if it has a heartbeat, you can kill it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's true. So that's how I overcame my fear in the dark. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I recommend teaching your kids that way. but Heck That's yeah. me. I've, 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 <laughs> I may have some mental problems. I don't know. You don't think that's cool, Adam? What's that's, up with that? That's pretty cool, I guess. That's, you're just uh, sad because you're still scared of the dark. No, no. Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of the dark anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just got over that fear right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Just, <laughs> just got, happened. Just now. <laughs> just happened. Uh, no, but Ooh. seriously, I mean, the, the the fears that kids have, the paranoia, and I see it. And let me tell you about, you know, kind of my experience with youth. I'm not making this stuff up. I didn't just have a couple of kids, right? I've been in the Boy Scout program for almost six years. I've been a scout master. I've been involved with Cub Scouts. I've been involved with scouts from 12 to 18 years old. I've worked in schooling programs. We have the Outdoor Mastery program that we run, which is two semesters a year, all high school, middle-aged school kids. We've been doing that for three years now. I've got the Pace Academy, the Youth Safety Education program that we run. I've worked with our church's youth groups for the last seven years. Um, I go up to Utah at least three to four weeks a year and deal with the Elevation Outdoors program, which is all high school, middle-aged school kids. Um, you know, I teach summer school classes for Williamsburg Academy out of Utah. Again, all kids. Like, I deal with a lot of youth. I'm not making, so it's like, I'm not just like, oh, this is based right. on my experience with a couple of kids. This is based on my experience with hundreds and hundreds of kids that I've seen come from every imaginable income level. I've dealt with international youth, kids who come from every kind of background, backgrounds of abuse, backgrounds of good, clean living kind of stuff, backgrounds of broken homes, backgrounds of all kinds of stuff. And so I can kind of average all that out and I see these different kids or these different youth and, and they all kind of want the same thing. Regardless of their age, they want some responsibility in their life. They want to know how to take care of themselves. They want confidence. And every single one of our youth programs, regardless of what kind of kids we're dealing with, regardless of their ages or anything else, they want confidence. That's what they want. And teaching youth how to handle emergencies, whether they're defensive emergencies, whether they're natural disasters, medical emergencies, how to deal with a car accident, whatever, whatever, whatever they could potentially ha you know, happen in their life gives them the confidence that they need to move on with their life and be a good, solid, productive member of society. It is so incredible um, the, the capabilities I've seen youth, you know, that have been in, in some of the programs I've been involved with where I see them day one and I see them two or three years later. It's amazing the difference in the level of confidence that they have just by going through some of the, you know, some of the programs that we're involved with. Teach the youth in your life, whether you're a parent, whether you're a, a school teacher, a church leader, whatever, you're a grandparent, you're an uncle or an aunt, um, you're just a neighbor or you're just a friend. Teach the youth in your life whatever skills that you have that will help them handle emergencies. If you're a mechanic, teach teach the kids in your life, you know, wh however that is, however you're associated with them, how to handle some basic stuff. Teach them how to really change a tire. 
Teach them how to jack, like right now when it's sunny and nice, bring them into, a, into an area, teach them how to jack up the car and safely change a tire. Then take them out on the highway and teach them how to do it there, even without a flat tire. Teach them how to change a tire in all those conditions. If that's your skill set, teach them that. If your skill, skill set is, is personal finance, there are plenty of emergencies in personal finance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've all had them, all right? Teach, if that's your thing, if you're good at accounting, if you're good at crunching numbers, you're good at budgeting, teach the kids in your life about that. Whatever your skill set is, teach the kids in your life, however you're associated with them, how to handle whatever kind of emergencies you think you can come up with based on whatever your skill set is. Adam? Do you want to no, say I'm d- no, I'm just uh, trying to figure <clears throat> out what my skill set would be. Oh. I don't know if you can... can't t- read, uh, I can't write. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> that stumps me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just kidding. Maybe we we'll have to pick that up in another, Mongo another, Smash. another show. It'll be or another something. show. Adam's skill it's like, set. Like what's Adam's skill? What's Adam's uh, skill set? He is kind of silverback gorilla size. Yeah, no, like nobody, nobody knows what my skill set is. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Kids in their fancy toys uh, these days. Uh, you must have just learned sound. That's twi- it's two sound effects in one show. You're welcome. You just figured that out, didn't you? Actually, I owe that to uh, <laughs> Jaime. Oh, yeah? Did he show you how to do yeah, that? Yeah, big, big, uh, big Jaime in there uh, showed us the sound effects last uh, oh, week, so we're starting to use that. Awesome. Well, I'm yeah. looking forward to more yeah. sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you know, whatever, whatever your skill set is, figure it out and share it with the, with the youth in your life. How you train them is going to be very much based on their age and what you think their comprehension level is going to be. Because you don't want to scare them. You don't. But you do want to keep the reality of the situation there. And don't overload them. Yeah, don't, again, don't freak them out about it. But, I mean, to talk real briefly for the last you know, minute or so we've got here, um, how about things like active school shooters? Is that a scary thing? I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, I've got. It's also, it's also more of a reality than a school yeah. burning down. The last time a school yeah. burned down in the U.S. was, I think, in the twenties. Really? At least, yes. Like that's real. No way. Yes. The last with time kids I, inside. With kids inside. What do you think, Adam? That sounds made up. I think that was in the twenties, and you can verify that with my wife. I'm gonna Google that. I think somebody needs to check the resources. Yeah, you better Google that. John. I'll give that a Google. All but right. it's been a long time since give the it school a burned down and kids died in it. But All we right. still, but school. Okay, still oh, but kids, oh, kids died, died in it. In it. Okay, yeah. well, you didn't say that the first okay. time. Okay, well, that changes right. everything. I apologize. All right, I apologize. All right, I was like, I tried to burn a right. school down when I was a kid, so I'm pretty sure that is not accurate. <laughs> but, okay, so and kids died in it, 1920s. Okay, yeah. but kids dying in school shootings, as we know. Happened uh, That's a, reality. a year and a half, two years. That's a reality. Yeah. So how do you teach your kids how to handle that? Because this is what we know, all right? These, this is what we know. We know that hiding out in the open isn't going to help. We know that, that teachers aren't necessarily going to save our kids. Not to, not, nothing against teachers. God bless you if you're a public school teacher. It's not again, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying we can't rely on anybody else to ever take care of our kids. Right, we've got to teach our kids how to take care of themselves. So, what do your kids know about the the run hide fight concept? I mean, they even know that. Look, get away if you can get away. Leave everything. Leave everybody. Yep. Go as fast and as far as you can. If that's not possible, then you're gonna hide. And this is where you're gonna hide. And this is how you're gonna barricade. And this is the kind of stuff in your school that stops bullets. And this is the kind of stuff in your school that doesn't stop bullets. You can do something simple. We talked about armor, you know, a couple weeks ago, and uh, the fact you can put armor in backpacks, right? Yep. Soft armor that weighs nothing, a couple pounds. Throw that in your kid's backpack. So in the back, some of them have a little hydration bladder, you know, space, whatever. Throw some armor in there. Teach them how to curl up behind that thing. Teach them how to use that as a shield. And God forbid, if it comes to it, teach them how to fight for their lives. Because if my kid's gonna die in a school shooting, I would rather be like, yeah, you know, this kid was, you know, wailing on the guy with a a, a yard a lunch stick, tray. a lunch tray, a, a, a chair, whatever, and then, you know, the kid got shot, and I would be like, you know what? At least they tried something. They went out confident, and they went out in the way that, obviously, I would never want that to happen, but they went out in such a way that I can look back and say they, they lived as much as they could while they were alive, as opposed to, yeah, your kid was the one cowering in the corner, you know? And, and obviously, it's hard to teach kids how to really, you know, we, we don't know what our kids are going to do under emergency until they're under emergency. We know that's the same thing with adults. But the confidence that you give them based on the training that you give them and the, and the education that you give them is really what's going to turn them into who they are, or who they become, I should say. 
Mm-hmm. Training youth is important. They are our future. So as always, if you have any questions, make sure that you drop them on our Facebook page. If you have questions about training, contact us over at independencetraining.com. You can email us. You can call us. Our contact information is on the website. Join us next week for uh, we're talking about handling uh, emergencies as adults and avoiding standard response and the and the myth of the average engagement. We're going to talk a little bit dun, more about dun, dun. self defense and getting away from bad square range habits. So join us next week. Stay aware, stay safe, train hard. You've been listening to the Arms Room. By the dawn to the light, what's so bright?